Christina, after more than eight hours of investigating evidence linked to the shooting, Toledo police have now cleared the scene. But this is what we know so far. At around 8.30 this morning, two people living here at the apartment complex called 911 to report a man screaming in the parking lot. Diane, an eyewitness is speaking out after what he saw take place right here at this busy intersection on Wednesday night. According to the witness and a TPD police report, two cars were racing through the street. As early as 8 a.m. this morning, concerned Bowling Green parents lined the space behind me in front of Bowling Green High School, demanding to see their kids back in the classroom. Christina, with vaccine access widening, Toledo Public Schools paired with a local health organization to help the health of families that are part of their district. Christian, even with the sundown, there are still people out here braving the snow, coming out and enjoying sledding today. Just a great, great guy. Nice guy. He can make friends anywhere. It didn't matter where we were at or who it was. The dude could talk to anybody. Lifelong friends of Stone Foltz are still in disbelief. The BGSU sophomore attended an off-campus event Thursday hosted by the Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity. He ended the night in the hospital. Stone was last listed in critical condition. According to the Fultz family lawyer, Stone is undergoing the process of organ donation. Mason Ross and Duncan Falk say they went to the hospital to say their goodbyes. He didn't look good. He didn't look like how, uh, how he usually does. I didn't think it was going to be easy, but it was a lot harder than I thought to go in there. When I walked and saw Stone there, it was my stomach twisted. Just to see someone that you love so much and that you've always seen so alive and so fun, it's just, it's the hardest thing you'll ever go through. Pi Kappa Alpha is speaking out after allegations of hazing. Leaders at the national level of the fraternity acknowledging they are aware of an unreported new member of its organization at BGSU being involved in an alleged alcohol-related hazing event, saying, quote, the international fraternity is horrified and outraged by this incident. The fraternity has a zero tolerance policy towards illegal activity, substance abuse, bullying, and hazing of any kind. End quote. The Fultz family attorney, Sean Alto, says legal action on his part against the fraternity is premature. It's too early to tell. Um, you know, when you say case, I'm not sure if you're talking about, you know, lawsuit, that sort of thing. I think it's too early to comment on that. Um, I, the fact, all the facts are, are not, are still... I say all the facts aren't out yet. Bowling Green police are continuing the investigation while those close to Stone are sending a message to members of the fraternity. Those games they play costed me my friend, it cost me my brother, a good friend. Stop Asian hate. Stop Asian hate. A line of support. Perrysburg men, women and children traveled across Woodlands Park symbolizing what it's like to walk in the shoes of an Asian American. And some people will yell at him, go back to your country. But I'm American too. <laughs> so this is my country as well. First generation American and president of the Chinese Association of Greater Toledo, Wayne Lee believes there's strength in numbers. Together, unite our community to speak out, to speak out our concerns to make sure the American dream that I came here 20 years ago, that actually stands. Staff with Perrysburg's Coalition for Inclusion and Social Justice say today's rally comes amid an explosion of anti-Asian sentiment during the pandemic, including nationwide physical attacks, such as Atlanta spa shooting, leaving eight dead. The names of the victims were read aloud. I think ultimately movements are based around people. And I think it's always important to remember people. And so for me, hearing the names being read was very meaningful for me. Activists of all ages shared speeches, poems, and perspectives. BGSU student Leon Wong says today's crowd are the people who will shape tomorrow's future. I would like for the children to not experience the words that I've experienced. I would like kids to be able to learn more about my culture and the reason that we are here. Stop Asian hate! Stop Asian hate! Speakers also addressed how to attempt to stop the hate, sharing resources right here in Northwest Ohio that can be used to report racial injustices. Wong says educating and unifying is a step in the right direction. I think there's a lot of work and a lot of things that still needs to be done, a lot more support that needs to be shown, but today is a small step towards that. It's been a tough year, but the sun is out in Hancock County and we're moving forward.
With 18% of Hancock County residents vaccinated and the county sitting above the state vaccine average for those 80 and older, Governor Mike DeWine says he likes the direction the community is headed and it could lead to fewer restrictions. As we look towards county fairs, as we look towards festivals, as we look to the summer parades and baseball games and all the things we want to do, um, there's no reason we're not going to be back to normal this summer. Hancock County Health Department officials are working with staff from the University of Finley and volunteers to bring the first mass clinic to the region. The great thing is if uh, people want the vaccine, you know, they, they're lining up now. And so, so many more people want to have it. So I think it's important that we get them out to the counties and so that these people can get vaccinated. Finley Mayor Christina Murin says the mass vaccination site is a step in the right direction. But the community needs more than vaccine access to recover from the effects of the pandemic. There's also the other aspects that we still were going to have to work through with the economic recovery, the mental and emotional turmoil that everyone dealt with over the past year. Governor DeWine also urging the community to know this battle is not over. We're not there yet. We're, we're, we're driving like a football team. We're down to the five yard line and we just got to keep going. We can't walk off the field now. So we got to continue to wear a mask and we got to continue to work very, very hard to get, you know, every citizen uh, in, in the state of Ohio who wants the vaccine to be able to do it. None of these men knew of each other, but what they did have in common is they all wanted their lives to have meaning. 19 year old David Meesh, 28 year old Javon Porter, 20 year old Stone Foltz, all passing away recently in separate tragedies, but all three men connected by being organ donors. These families are incredible. You know, it's a horrible tragedy that's happened. They've lost a loved one and somehow they're looking beyond their own grief. They're thinking of others and they want their loved one to live on and literally save lives through organ donation. David, Javon and Stone's legacy living on. Staff with Life Connection of Ohio work side by side with families in the most difficult times of their lives. So one person has the power to save eight lives through organ donation and enhance the lives of 125 more through tissue donation. So I really cannot think of a better life-saving legacy that can be left than registering as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Due to confidentiality and privacy agreements, Life Connection can't comment on how many lives David Meesh, Javon Porter, and Stone Fultz specifically impacted with their donations. But Director Kara Steele says recipient families are forever grateful. You know, we said prayers for the donor family because we knew that somebody was going to have to pass away in order for me to be able to get that transplant and, and live again. Since birth, Tanya Gomez of Archibald has battled cystic fibrosis and was left with only 10% lung function. Doctors told her she would not survive without a double lung transplant. 17 years ago, that transplant came from a Wisconsin child named Adam. I found out that my donor was a 10 year old boy and that was really hard for us because we had a child ourselves, and so we cried for a long time and we realized that it was going to happen either way. With each breath Tanya takes, she says she thinks of Adam and other organ donors who give people a second chance at life. They gave me something that I can't thank them enough for. I mean, I just can't. And staff with Life Connections stress just how easy and important it is to become an organ donor. You can do so by going to the DMV and changing your status on your driver's license, or you can go to their website, which we have a link to on our website, to become an organ donor. Reporting live, Jack Bassett, 13ABC, Action News.